Hello, and thank you for attending virtual public involvement meeting number two for the Pewaukee to Brookfield multi-use path. I'm Linda Fink with KL Engineering, and Stephen Sidlars with Waukesha County Parks is also here. I'm going to provide a quick outline of the presentation. We'll start with an introduction of the project, provide an updated timeline and typical sections, then we'll go into more detail on the design of the bridges, the trailheads, and the intersection improvements. Stephen will then provide some additional resident updates and summarize the environmental improvements for the corridor. I'll then go back to discuss frequently asked construction questions and we'll close with providing information for additional contacts or comments that you may have. As you may be aware, the project consists of a 10 foot wide paved trail on the abandoned railroad corridor owned by the county. The corridor is 66 foot wide and is approximately 3.5 miles in length. It traverses through scenic woodlands and wetlands, and it does include the conversion of three existing railroad bridges to bike ped bridges. The project is a partnership with DOT and the city of Brookfield. It is a 80-20 grant from DOT with 20% being local funds. Our current estimate for construction is $2.2 million. The project has completed a number of items to date. Initially, the data gathering for the site has been completed. Preliminary design and environmental work, obviously PIM number one was held, and since that time, DOT approvals for environmental and design reports have been completed. We're currently working on the development of final plans, specifications, and estimates, the land acquisition on the west end for the small parking lot, the permitting, then after that in October, we'll be submitting the final ps &E. In December, we're anticipating project bidding. In February, project award, and then March of next year, start of construction. The design of the typical sections has remained the same from PIM number one. To recap, within the railroad corridor, we're going to be utilizing the existing railroad ballast as base and then build up. It's centered on the railroad corridor. We'll be removing any of the topsoil on the ballast, the ties themselves, and the rails. The construction activities will be limited to the county corridor. The finished section will be a 10 foot wide asphalt pavement, three foot wide shoulders at a six to one slope or less steep than that, and then match into existing grade as quickly as possible, typically three to five feet. There are three bridges within the trail corridor. All three of these railroad bridges will be converted to bike ped bridges. The existing substructure on each will remain and be cleaned and repaired. The graffiti on all of them will be removed. The ties and other timber aspects will be removed and replaced. And then a prefabricated system will be built on top of the existing substructures on each bridge. This then adds the decking and the railings for the bike pedestrian use to the bridges. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Steven. Thanks, Linda. We will now look at the designs for the trailheads, of which there are two on this project. The first is located on the southwest end of the trail at the terminus of North Avenue in the city of Pewaukee. Our goal for this design was to maximize the usable space within the parcel that we are acquiring for this facility while minimizing the environmental impacts that the construction of this parking lot will have on the parcel. Uh, so in that, we had to reduce our original intent of a 10 stall lot to the small five stall design that you see here. Uh, there will be, again, five stalls. One will be an accessible one. And then there is a connecting path that leads from the parking area to the main trail. The 
The second trailhead facility will be found on the northeast end of the trail in the city of Brookfield. It will be bound on the north by Riverview Drive, on the east by Brookfield Road, on the south by River Hills Drive, and on the west by a residential lot. This slide shows the connections to and around the proposed trailhead facility. The main path, the 10 foot asphalt path, will continue to the existing sidewalk at Brookfield Road. And then we are also proposing an eight foot wide accessible concrete path to connect the main path to the parking lot for the trailhead facility where bike racks will be available for bike parking and the proposed cafe will have public restroom access as well. The trailhead facility is not part of this project. The proposed cafe and associated parking is a separate collaboration between the city of Brookfield and a private development group. For more information on that, you can visit the City of Brookfield's website. One concern that came out of the first public information meeting was for the safety of trail users at the intersections of the trail and Watertown Road and the trail and Barker Road and North Avenue roundabout. Uh, we've addressed those concerns with our uh, advanced warning signage on the trail and on the roads. Uh, along the trail, advanced warning signs will be placed uh, roughly 150 feet from the intersection and then stop signs will be placed at the intersection. And on Watertown Road, uh, advanced warning signage saying pedestrian and bicycle traffic crossings will be placed roughly 565 feet from the intersection and then again repeated at the actual intersection. Uh, in conjunction with the signage, the there will be high visibility pavement markings uh, signifying where the exact crossing of the trail is located. For the intersection improvements at the roundabout at North Avenue and Barker Road, we consulted extensively with the City of Brookfield and Wisconsin Department of Transportation and the Waukesha County Department of Public Works for their recommendations on the safety improvements for the design of this intersection. The improvements to the crossings were to encourage trail users to utilize the south and southeast quadrant, get a majority of the trail use at these two crossings. Uh, so motorists would recognize where the majority of the trail use would be. And also improvements for the trail crossings within the medians, they will be widened to 10 feet, as will the sidewalk on the southeast quadrant of this intersection will also be widened to 10 feet. And again, we will be using the advanced warning signage on both the trail and the roads. And then in conjunction with that, we will have the high visibility pavement markings and additional signage at the crosswalks. Updates for residents with properties adjacent to the corridor. All proposed new vegetation in a landscaping plan will be planted within the county owned corridor and current areas of mowed lawn on the county property will be restored with native vegetation. Uh, more on that will be talked about in the next slide. And as pertaining to personal belongings on county property, we ask that any encroachments on county property be removed this summer prior to our putting this project out to bid. 
Uh, encroachments can be wood piles, retaining walls, or any formalized landscaping, trees that have been planted, especially if you want to save them. And retaining walls, again, fencing, compost bins, uh, recreational equipment, uh, etc. Please notify us uh, if you have any encroachments that you have recently removed from county property. And for a quick check, if you are concerned, see if you do have an encroachment. Um, easy way to do it is to measure 33 feet from the center of the rails on either side. Uh, we do own the property on both sides of the, of the tracks. So that's a quick and easy way for you to see if you, you do have an encroachment that you should remove. If you, again, if you have any other questions, concerns about encroachments, please contact us. There are a few environmental improvements that will result from the construction of this trail. Number one, all existing railroad ties and rail will be removed from the corridor and transported and disposed of off-site in accordance with environmental regulations. Number two, invasive and overly aggressive trees and shrubs such as buckthorn, black locust, box elder in the direct trail footprint will be removed. And the third is supplemental native plantings will be added to the corridor to enhance habitat for native pollinators. And with that, I will hand it back to Linda to address some frequently asked questions about the construction process. Thank you, Stephen. I am now going to review frequently asked construction questions on trail projects such as this. Number one question is typically access. The contractor will be accessing the corridor from the intersection roadways. They are limited to work within the corridor and will not be on your property, nor accessing through your property. The project schedule. This is dependent on final DOT approval, which ties to when we can bid, but there are a number of items that would be beneficial for us to do in late winter, early spring. This is ideal for the clearing and grubbing, the rail and tie removal, and some of the bridge work. We are ultimately aiming for completion of the project in summer 2021. One of the questions we also run into is what is the public access during construction? It is a closed construction site for everyone's safety. We don't want people on it with the exception of the contractors. So no bicycle or pedestrian traffic will be allowed until the project is complete. And then finally, how will you know when it's starting and the progress? The county will be sending a letter to all adjacent property owners ahead of construction once a contractor is selected, and the county will have a website with construction updates throughout the whole process. And with that, we'd like to then review how you can provide comments or contact us with any additional questions. Number one, you can fill out and mail the comment form on the project website to us. This is the same form that you received via mail. You can email Stephen or myself directly. Just be sure to include the same information from the form. And then the contact information for Stephen and myself is listed below. We do ask that you submit any comments or questions by Friday, July 24th. And we thank you for listening to this presentation.